G'day Ziggy D here and today I'm going to be doing a Path of Exile video that I see requested a lot. Uh, it's about planning a build and all of the things that go into that in how to plan out a good build in Path of Exile. Because builds are pretty complex in Path of Exile. You can you have a lot of freedom but it can also be pretty overwhelming. Uh, often new players looking at the passive skill tree alone uh, are going to be pretty overwhelmed by the amount of choices that they have. So uh, going into the game with a good plan and a good idea of what you're going to be making and how you're going to be making it uh, is a pretty good way to play Path of Exile and you're going to end up getting a lot more enjoyment out of it doing it that way than sort of just stumbling your way through the passives tree and uh, ending up with characters that you don't really play very well or that you don't really enjoy to play. So there's a few things that I'll, I'll cover in this that all go into this idea of creating a build. Firstly there's the theme of your build, uh, there's your keystones and major passives on that passive skill tree, uh, there's skills and skill availability, what skills you can actually get, and then there's gearing and all of these things sort of tie into each other. Now the biggest issue for new players is that things like skills, skill availability and gearing uh, are very hard to know about before you've actually played the game for a fair amount of time. So we can, there are a few things that you can do to sort of plan this out vaguely and that's all you really need to do for your first character. Uh, it's pretty much guaranteed that you're going to screw up your first character in some way so just take that uh, as a given and use it as a good learning experience to learn these things like the types of skills and gear and things like that you like in the theme and that will help you a lot in your next build. But I'm going to try and give you guys the best shot of coming up with a good build uh, right off the bat. So the first thing I'm going to be looking at is your theme and it's the, the sort of the idea uh, what you want to play, how you, how you feel like playing the game and this is pretty much the easiest way to decide on the theme of your character is through your character classes. Now the thing about Path of Exile's character classes is that they aren't uh, strongly defined, as in you can make a witch that wields two-handed hammers and just does insane melee damage just as much as you can make a marauder that does that same thing. Uh, the only difference is that it's going to be a fair bit harder to plan out a witch that actually pulls that off well. <laughs> so we'll be using these classes and uh, where they lie on the strength, intelligence, dexterity sort of uh, diagram here as the the building point for your theme. So obviously we have the three uh, pure classes here. We have the Witch which is the pure intelligence class, the Marauder which is the pure strength class, and the Ranger which is the pure dexterity class. Uh, in, in between those classes we have the hybrid classes which we have the Duelist which is uh, half strength half dexterity class, the Shadow which is, which is a half intelligence half dexterity class, and the uh, Templar who is a half strength half intelligence class. So already, just from their names and where they lie on this spectrum of these main main stats, you can sort of get an idea of the theme of each one. Obviously, if you're gonna you like casting a lot of spells and stuff, you're gonna probably go with a witch for your first character. And maybe if you like uh, the idea of being strong and agile and you know dual wielding swords and things like that, then the duelist is probably going to be uh, your good starting point. Now to give you an idea of how you can take one of these classes uh, through the rest of this process, I'm going to just decide on one. And for this I'm going to be using the Duelist. Uh, the Duelist is your, your Strength Dexterity Hybrid class. Uh, they're, they're fast but they also have some of the strength of the Marauder so they can sort of either branch off towards the Marauder side of things being stronger with more melee damage or they can branch off towards the Ranger and even picking up some ranged skills and things like that. So I'm going to be going with the Duelist and the theme that I'm sort of picturing in my mind is a heavy hitting bow duelist, so one that uses uh, the advantage of advantages provided by a bow and uh, the strength as well of the marauder to make really hard hitting bow user. So that's that's the idea of my theme, we'll see how that plays out through the rest of these steps. So the next most logical step to take our duelist uh, is through this skill tree. This skill tree, I'll provide links to each one of these steps and the pages, the, the tools that I use for each one of these steps uh, in the description below. And now I'm just using the skill tree provided on the website which has, has a few nifty tools that can help us out like this highlight shortest paths here which shows us uh, the quickest way to get to certain nodes. So we'll de deselect this for the moment because we're just going to be looking at keystone passives and major passives nodes. So we want to make a heavy hitting strong bow user. So the first thing, the easiest way to plan out your build on the passives tree is to look at your starting point, which we have the duelist here, we have the duelist selected, and then to look at uh, one or multiple uh, major keystones, which are these gold surrounded ones here, these larger gold surrounded ones, and then to um, plot a path to those ones that you want that give your build the flavor you want, 
whilst picking up uh, the logical nodes along the path and other things that are going to benefit your build. So I've already sort of spied out two that I have that I like here. I'm obviously pretty uh, experienced with this passive tree, but you'll you'll have to have a bit of explore to find the ones you like. So to start off with, I'm going to be looking at this iron grip one here, which it, uh, gives you physical damage uh, from strength onto your bows, which doesn't uh, isn't normally the case. So this takes one advantage of the hybrid nature of the duelist, his strength uh, focus, and applies that to bows, which we're going to be looking at. So I think that's almost a certainty for us to um, go for that. And another one I'm going to be looking at here is iron reflexes, which converts all evasion rating to armor. I want a nice solid defensive uh, Archer as well, and since he has that evasion from the dexterity, I can convert that into armor uh, as I'm sort of around in here while still being very good defensive. So I feel like they're sort of going to synergize up nicely together. I'm going to end up having a fair bit of armor from that com combined strength and dexterity armor. Now another possible one I could take is this point blank one here, which could give us a sort of like a melee archer sort of flavor. It increases your damage the closer you are to enemies. So if you're um, firing at them point blank, you're going to do a lot more damage. And with our uh, extra armor and um, the iron grip past uh, keystones and things like that, uh, point blank could be an interesting flavor one. That's sort of an optional one at the moment, but these two are going to be the main ones I'm getting. So we're starting here. Let's go have a look at the highlight the shortest paths here and find the uh, direction the sort of basic route we're going to take so either through this outside route here or this or this inside route here looking at this inside route we don't really have anything that benefits bows too much uh, there's some invasion and things like that we have projectile damage through here but oh, we also have fury bolts in here so they're okay but we could probably duck in from here I'm thinking I'm gonna take the outside route for this one uh, we also have these these bow passives here, which like must deflect a 15 extra physical damage with bows, is a pretty major advantage. So I think we're going to go, uh, we can fill in these here using this tool, it's pretty nifty. So we'll just fill out the very basic route for now. And I think, yeah, I think going down there is going to be the shortest path. Now important, while I'm doing this, an important thing to note about this is you start off with 111 points. And that's the maximum possible points you can get in the game, however it's very difficult to get that higher level and to get that far in the game. So around 60 is probably what you would expect to uh, take a serious character to sort of the end game content, 60 or 70. So I'm going to go with 60 and I'm not going to plan any more than uh, until this gets to 50 points left because that will give us around around the 60 passives mark. Of course you could plan out your t entire 111 but that's not really going to help you for the build. So now we have our Iron Reflexes passive. It's a very short uh, distance to get from there to point blank so we can easily do that as sort of like a little branch. We've also got uh, Celerity here which is extra move speed which can be pretty handy for an archer. Now the other one we wanted to get to was Iron Grip and that's a pretty direct route from here. This build seems to be coming together quite nicely so we'll fill in those there. We're also noticing that we're picking up a fair bit of strength now. We're probably going to want to think about getting more strength in the future to benefit that further, that iron grip further, but we'll see how we go. So now that we've got there, we've still got about 30 points left that we can uh, sink into the, the sort of the branching off points. So obviously we're going to want this, uh, all of these bow passives here. Maybe not the last one, maybe not accuracy. Uh, that's, an that's another optional one there, but we'll go for there for now. Let's also grab this Fury Bolts one here is quite powerful, so we'll grab that. Now we have uh, another 28 points left. Let's see what we can see what we can grab from there. Uh, an extra strength uh, ability here. We've also got some life. Uh, it's a good idea to have life in in your build, especially if you're going for a, a fairly melee focus. So just for uh, testing sake, let's put in this here and go to point blank. And we've still got 20 points left, so. From there you can sort of think, well maybe is there another keystone I could shoot for or should I just fill out any weaknesses in my um, character's build like getting extra accuracy or uh, getting more defensive stats or things like that. You can either spend those 20 points towards that or maybe you can take a look up uh, up further here and see any, if there's any other interesting bow passives around this area up towards the, uh, the, hunter, the huntress's section there. Otherwise we could go in and get some more strength or life from here. We have lots of options, we could get more resistances, uh, there's lots of general sort of stats in the center, or we could head towards more the Marauder side of things and get some more strength related stuff. So as you can see there's a lot of options, but that gives us the basic framework, uh, framework of our build. And as we're actually playing along in the game and sort of feeling our strengths and weaknesses, we can fill them out with those extra points we have left to play with.
Now an important thing to note is that it's not always a good idea to rush straight for these keystone pluses while you're actually leveling. Uh, let's say for example we're making a witch who is going to be using chaos inoculation which uh, reduces your life to one but uh, gives you more energy shield and it's a good idea to first pick up a lot of energy shield passives before going for that because unless you have a lot of energy shield before reducing your life to one uh, you're going to have a very hard time if you rush straight for chaos inoculation that's just one example there's a lot of examples of that and you're sort of going to have to use your best judgment on whether it's a good idea to go straight for those keystones or whether it's not with this build here we've got nothing really that has huge op uh, opportunity costs losing some evasions probably not a huge deal in the early game Point Blank is sort of more a stylistic thing and Iron Grip uh, doesn't really have a negative effect to it at all, so it's easy enough to rush for that. So the next uh, point for us to look at is actually the skills. Now uh, on the official websites here there's a full list of the skills, so we have Strength, Dexterity and Intelligence skills. Since we're going to be going with a bow we're mostly going to be looking at Dexterity skills, but it's possible to uh, grab a few from Strength and Intelligence, though you'll sort of find those just through your general play. Now there's a full list here of ones you can go for and we can look at things like uh, what have we got towards arrows, we've got a few auras that could benefit us a fair bit uh, Lightning arrow could be a good choice to go for, we could go for poison arrow Poison arrow is probably not such a good choice since we're going for more of a heavy hitting sort of one uh, Puncture could be decent, split arrows could be decent if we're going to be at close range and uh, really stacking that damage up, you know, hitting multiple times things around, so that could be a nice AoE sort of build and I think that's probably what I'd go with, but there's a fair few other choices in there Now the important thing for this is that not all skills are available to other players unless you're willing to trade for them. So there's this uh, pretty useful Google Documents spreadsheet here of the availability of each of these skills through actual quests. So uh, let's see, we've got the the different quests here uh, that what they reward what they reward your character with and which class gets each one of those. So if you find some skills you like. You can go through this sort of, again I'll put this in the description, you can go through this and find the skills that you actually want to use and how to get them. And if it's a huge uh, you know, challenge, like you're making a duelist and the skill you want from a ranger all the way down here or something like that and you don't have access to that, then trading for it is probably going to be your best option. And then finally, is the most sort of challenging one for unacquainted players with the game is gearing. However, there are, there are a few things you can do. Uh, a good part of theming your character is sometimes building your build around a unique or having a unique uh, which is a legendary for ex Diablo players having a unique weapon or piece of gear that uh, really slots nicely into your build so we've got a few options here let's just take a look at bows for example we've got um, early on we've got things like death's harp and we've got uh, where is this other one quill rain there which is, they're both quite le low level bows which could be good uh, Death's Harp could be good because it gives you an extra additional arrow and a lot of extra critical strike multiplier which uh, the Jewels has a lot of access to critical strike chance so having that multiplier could that could be a unique that sort of sockets in there nicely and we could also look at unique types of boots and uh, unique arm, chest armors like we've got Fox Shade here which could be quite good with extra move speed and evasion rating which will get converted to armor and things like that uh, extra physical damage, extra dexterity uh, or we could look at things like the Ashran buckskin tuning starting off with these sort of low level ones and uh, just having an idea there if you find one that you like on this list you can simply ask in the general chat if you have some uh, nice currency items like chaos orbs or things like that to trade for yeah um, most people will be willing to trade for these especially if it's still in closed beta people don't really mind throwing away their legendaries otherwise besides these unique items your gearing choices are going to come from uh, the rolls that you get and the ability to re-roll things with the different currencies in the game to come up with the exact sort of uh, armor setup you want the not, like with the Arduulus, a nice mixture of evasion and armor all converted to armor and a nice mixture of strength and dexterity to hit often and hit hard with our bow, things like that uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of different choices you can make through the game and you're going to best discover those simply by playing a fair bit I really wish I could provide more general gearing advice but uh, it's, it's pretty hard to do. I guess one general piece of advice I can give is uh, to pay attention to the passives you're choosing. If you find you're choosing mostly offensive passives, uh, then you're going to have to realize that you're going to have to make up a lot of the defensive side of things in your gear and vice versa. 
So that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys have found that pretty helpful uh, and now have a good idea how to go about planning out your actual build so that you can come up with some interesting builds. One of the most awesome things about Path of Exile is the flexibility and the customization you have in your builds and your characters and your gearing and your theme and all of that sort of thing. You can do pretty much anything you can sort of uh, creatively think of. So. Uh, this is one of the parts that I certainly enjoy most about the game and hopefully uh, this video has helped you to be able to enjoy it more yourself. Anyway, that's it for today. I'm Ziggy D and thanks for watching.